All right, hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the delay effector and delay field, and we'll see their differences as well as their similarities. So let's go ahead and get started. I have a simple setup here with a text formerly known as MoText, and we're gonna to wanna to have this selected so that when we apply a plane effector, um, it gets added to the letters um, effector tab or effects um, tab. So I'll come up to our MoGraph objects, and choose plane. I'll then come into the parameter tab and we're gonna zero out the default Y value here. Come down here to the Z and I'm gonna set that to negative 150, which will pull the text towards us a little bit. Um, I'm gonna skip scale uh, so that I can go to rotation and set it to say 90 degrees or so. And I skipped scale so that we could see what we are doing with rotation because um, we're going to eventually make these disappear uh, so that when we add the linear field, we get them to appear. So we can do scale. We also want to use uniform scale so everything gets applied evenly. And I'll set this to negative one. And this is what I was talking about. Had we done scale first, we wouldn't have been able to see what we are doing with rotation. So we have our plane all set up now. It's going to be time to add a linear field and animate this moving across. Now, before we animate this moving across, I am gonna increase its length a little bit to give this a little bit more overlap between the letters, maybe something like 400 centimeters or so. And then I'm gonna go and keyframe this. So I'll move it all the way to the left here where I don't see any of my letter. All right and select the linear field and keyframe it frame zero on the x position go to frame 120 pull this through till it the r stops keyframe x position again on the last frame of my preview range and so this is what we have pretty basic uh, MoGraph animation uh, there is one more thing we're going to do to this before we add the delay effector or field and that's gonna to be to go into the remapping tab because the remapping tab allows us to essentially adjust the interpolation here. So if we think of the beginning of the linear field and the end of the linear field, I can move this up so we can see it a little better, the beginning and end of the linear field, um, like keyframes, uh, the remapping is our interpolation. And right now it's linear, uh, which is something we usually want to avoid. So we can come down here in the remapping tab to the contour mode. Um, and if you really like working with keyframes and the timeline, you can switch the mode to curve and then you get Bezier handles in a curve just like if these were keyframes. I personally use the quadratic more often than not as we can either slow things down a little bit like we're seeing here, or in this case, what we're gonna do is speed things up a little so that it works a little bit better with our delay. Okay, and in fact, I think I'm actually gonna speed up this animation a little bit. So I'll take that last keyframe and slide it to say uh, frame 90 or so. Okay, so now we can add the delay. I'm gonna select the text object again so that uh, is selected. I can come up here and choose delay. All right, and we can just check to make sure it got applied in the letters tab here. It's at the very bottom, all right? And it is important that it is on the bottom uh, as the delay effector works on existing animation. So the plane is gonna happen first and then the delay will get applied to it. Now it's a little bit tricky to see at this point, but the delay already is kind of smoothing things out a little bit. If we go into the effector tab, we can see uh, the strength is set to 50% and we already have a uh, blend mode uh, set to kind of smooth and blend the animation here. If I was to increase this, we would see that even more. Now, I also want to point out that uh, turning up or, or really working with the delay effector, effector in general can increase the length of our animation. We're not really seeing it here um, you know, before my, my timeline repeats, but it is something to be cautious of if you're, you know, have a very well-defined length of time you need to um, work with it. Okay, so that's the blend mode, but the, the mode I personally prefer is the spring to get a little bit of bounciness or overshoot. Okay, and so this is what we can get with that, you know, the, the strength. If you want more of this or less, 
we can work with the strength. Sometimes, you know, it's nice to have it be just a little bit subtle. Other times, it can be fun to have it be over the top. All right, now in this case, you know, turning it up too high means it's gonna be intersecting my geometry, which I typically like to avoid. So something like that looks much better. And now we can go into the parameter tab. With the parameter tab, we can control where this delay effector is being applied. So whether it's getting applied to the positional movement and animation, the scale animation, and rotation. And you can check these off or on um, as you see fit. And typically what I like to do with these is to check only um, whatever properties I've animated in, in this case, my plane. So my plane effector, I am using position, scale, and rotation. Uh, but if, say, I wasn't using rotation, then I typically would want to un- check this okay and i don't know if it's going to be making a huge difference here uh since this is still pretty slow but um it is nice that we have this added control and that's actually one of the main differences between the um, delay effector and the delay field is that with the effector we have a little bit more control over what properties get that spring or get that blend all right so that is the delay effector in a nutshell um, let's do it with a field this time. So I'm going to delete the delay, go back into my plane effector and into the fall off tab, and we can add a delay modifier layer here and it's under clamp. But, uh, if you left click and hold, you'll see we have delay. Now, when we add the delay here, it's actually going to be on top. And that is the preferred place. If you put it underneath, you're not going to get any animation. Okay. Uh, and if we look, you know, it may look like we're getting a little bit something. We still have that smooth blend mode. And, you know, once again, I can turn this up um, and we'll get something very, very similar to what we had previously. If I switch this to the spring mode, you're going to see that the movement I get is a little bit strange. And that is due to the clamping um, that we have enabled in our plane effector, meaning it really can't spring forward. So it's, it's just kind of springing um, in one direction here, really kind of the, the direction we had it move on the Z-axis. So if I uncheck this, now you can see we're getting some nicer movement, but just like previously when the strength was so high or too high, uh, it was going through uh, my letters. So we don't want that. So I can turn this down a little bit and now we have pretty much the same thing we had before. Um, the Big difference, as I said, with the delay field is that we do not have a way to um, control whether it's on the position, scale, and rotation, or any combination of those. We're just kind of uh, left with what it gives us, and it is being applied to um, our existing animation. So once again, in the parameter tab of our plane effector, that spring is being applied to the position, scale, if I check back on rotation, it will be applied on that as well. So it's important to note that um, that is how it works. And I still think the strength is a bit high there, but I think something like that uh, looks pretty good. One last note about the delay effector. Um, it can be problematic if you are going to render a project on multiple computers that has um, a project that has the delay effector or field in it. Uh, so it's important to apply the MoGraph cache tag to any MoGraph generators. That's the text, a cloner, a fracture, Voronoi fracture, um, those types of objects, really the green objects in our um, MoGraph menu here. Uh, so yeah, you need to add a, add a MoGraph cache tag. So if I was gonna render this on multiple computers, a render farm or something, I would right click on the text go to MoGraph tags, choose MoGraph cache, um, and then I can just hit bake. And that's gonna save out the animation into my file directly. We can see it's using a little bit of memory here. Uh, and that way we won't run into issues rendering on multi multiple computers, like I said. Uh, so that's all I got for this one. Stay tuned for another one.